This video is gonna be about the mass airflow sensor on this Mercedes S-Class with a 3.2 liter V6 engine. We're gonna see how to remove the sensor, how to clean it, and more importantly, I'm gonna show you a couple of tests you can do in the situation when you've got these trouble codes listed on the screen. Right, I've got the engine warmed up. It's idling very well, around 700 RPMs. And this is the mass airflow rate you want to see. The intake air temperature is kind of high. I suspect that's because the engine is running over 80 degrees Celsius. Now let's see if we increase the RPM, if the mass airflow rate will increase as well. Now these are the averages per 1000 RPMs. Keep in mind that it's important to consider if the engine wants to rev up or down when the screenshots were made, since the engine will first take in air and only after that the RPMs will also increase. Anyway, the averages are looking pretty good. It does not look like the mass airflow sensor has a massive failure or there is a huge air leak into the system. We're gonna see the voltage values on the connector. I believe it's very important to know the values before when the sensor is working properly. You store those values somewhere. Then when you suspect that the sensor is bad, you can compare again the values and determine in that way if the sensor is wrong or if there is any problems with the connection. And back here you're gonna find the mass airflow sensor. Now from this point I want to unplug the connector and check the values. It doesn't want to come out, I tried. Oh, finally. Now to take out this whole assembly from here, you've got these two clips here on the side. Press on this metal clip. Okay. And this sensor assembly should come out. Now I've got the sensor out, the connector there, and I want to take out the sensor from this assembly. There is a special bit, it's called IPR, and you're gonna need number 25. You can see it fits perfectly in there. It's not absolutely necessary to take it out from here, but if you want to replace the sensor, then you definitely need this. And here it comes. So let's see a little quick how this mass airflow sensor unit works. It has five pins, they are also numbered. Three wires are gonna be for the mass airflow sensor and two wires are gonna be for the intake air temperature sensor, which is right here. So you've got here the direction of the airflow. You've got inside there two hot wires. One of them is gonna be kept on a constant temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Once the air passes by, the current necessary to keep that wire hot on a constant temperature increases and that's how the computer can calculate how much air enters through that tube. Very important takeaway from this is that the computer is calibrated to know exactly and calculate precisely how much air enters inside the intake manifold only with this type of intake hose and only with this type of mass airflow sensor. Here you've got the part number if you need it. Now once you've got the component out, you can do a bench test. And using a voltmeter, the only thing you can check is the resistance between the pins. I've got the voltmeter turned to 2 million ohms. Okay, the last settings here. Inside there, you can see pin number 1. I'm going to start from that one and connect my red terminal. I'm gonna turn it upside down like that. Make sure it's not touching pin number two. Between pin one and two, we've got nothing. One and three. Okay, let's decrease the range. Let's go to 20,000. Between pin one and three, 2,150 ohms. Pin one and four, we've got 6,550 ohms. And one and five, let's increase the range. And between pin 1 and 5, we've got around 315,000 ohms. Between pin 2 and 3, nothing. 2 and 4, nothing. 2 and 5, nothing. Okay, between pin number 3 and 4, we've got 4,400 ohms. Between pin 3 and 5, we've got again 315,000 ohms. And finally, let's test pin number four and five. It has also 
315,000 ohms. Now I'm going to put all the values on the screen and you can use them when you bench test the mass airflow sensor on this car. Now let's turn the key in the second position. I'm going to hold the connector this way, which means that this is pin number one. The readings are from the sensor. Okay, so let's see between pin number one and two, 8.37 volts. One and three, 4.9 volts. One and four, nothing. One and five, 4.9 volts. Keep in mind that when you see a minus on the screen, the polarity is reversed. Now let's put the red terminal on pin number two. Between two and three, we've got the car battery voltage. Also keep in mind that I've got the car battery on a charger. You can see the voltage is increasing. Let's see between pin number two and four, we've got 9.5 volts. Between pin number two and five, we've got again the car battery voltage. I actually recommend it that when you do this test, you've got a charger on your car. Okay, let's see between pin number three and four, we've got 4.9 volts. Let's see finally between pin number four and five, we've got almost five volts. Okay. Now I've got the scan tool connected and the sensor connected. I want to see if the sensor will react when the engine is not running. If I touch a little bit the sensor, you can see the temperature increase. It will take my body temperature. However, on some cars, if you blow on the mass airflow sensor, you're gonna see some readings in there, even though the engine is not running. So I want to see that right now. There is no change in mass airflow rate. At the beginning, we saw that the sensor can read the air which enters inside the engine but this doesn't mean that the measurement is accurate because those hot wires can be covered in a very thin layer of debris, oil or dust. Those things can actually prevent the thermal loss of those hot wires, therefore messing up the readings of the airflow. So to exclude that possibility, we got to clean it up. You got to use mass airflow sensor cleaner. This will leave those hot wires clean. let it dry. I believe it's very important to clean as well the housing because this can contain as well a lot of dust. Okay, just a little bit. Let's place the sensor back. Make sure that the green gasket also seals. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe, it's free for you and you get a lot of free videos about how to repair and maintain different cars. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.